Okay, cool. Yes, so welcome to my talk about uh, titled uh, Use Malloc to Speed Up Your Code. Wait, what? Uh, and that this, uh, wait, I just need to get the keyboard working. There we go. Okay, so a little background about this one. Like a while back, I did some internal uh, C++ training for, for my company, like some beginner and intermediate training. And then as part of that, I wanted to show like what is the difference between a heap allocation and stack allocation. And in particular, what is the difference in, um, in performance by these two? Like what implications does this have? Uh, then I used uh, QuickBench, which is a quite nifty little tool uh, that you can use to quickly make some, some code examples and try to benchmark two different things up against each other. So in this one, it's like string creation and string copy was the fastest. You can see uh, string creation is much faster than string copy. So that's kind of how it works. So I thought I could use that pretty easily to get a quick graph over, okay, don't use heap allocations all the time. Uh, prefer stack allocations if you can. So I did a quick little benchmark and that's the code right here. I hope you can read it, it's not too small. So we have a class and then we have two different structs. One of the structs, it allocates uh, on the heap, on the free store. And, and the other one we just allocate on the on the stack. Uh, and you might be wondering why I, use, I don't use uh, make unique. Uh, the thing is that make unique actually zeroes out the allocated memory. And I don't want that to happen here because that doesn't happen in this uh, non-allocating struct case. Uh, that's why we have this make unique for overwrite because if you use that one, then uh, make unique for overwrite will not uh, zero out all the memory. Just so just to keep the benchmark uh, fair, I just use the old uh, new uh, here and wrap that in unique pointer. So anyway, that's the stuff I want to benchmark. And the benchmarking code is very, very simple. Uh, I want to benchmark the allocating struct and I want to benchmark the non-allocating struct. And of course we need to, to write uh, do optimize here because otherwise this will all get optimized out by the uh, by the compiler. So we use this in the in the Google benchmark library. They have a do not optimize thing. So it says this one should not get optimized out because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense any of this uh, benchmarking. So I ran the benchmark on QuickBench and I got the following results. And I was very happy. I proved my point. The non-allocating struct was 25 faster than uh, 20 time, time, 25 times faster than the allocating struct. So that was brilliant. Uh, so yeah, just what we expected. But then of course you start playing a little bit around. You want to see what happens. What, what about if we increase the size of the struct? Like will the allocating case then get even worse? Uh, that could be a thing. Maybe malloc is pretty fast for, for small allocations, but, but what about if they get a bit bigger? Will it then be even slower? Um, so we changed the class definition here from this to something slightly bigger. Uh, so yeah, what do you think will happen? Now, I expected no real change because, well, doing a new can be pretty cheap and doing it slightly bigger is probably also gonna be quite cheap because it's just probably gonna take it out of the one of the buckets that it has already allocated. Uh, I thought maybe slightly slower heap allocation. So I ran this code and this happened. All of a sudden, the non-allocating was actually faster than the, uh, sorry, the allocating was actually faster than the non-allocating case. And at this point, my world just crumbled and I got into fetus position and saying, I know nothing and this is all, all wrong. But after a bit of that, I said, okay, we need, we need to investigate what actually is going on here. So uh, QuickBench can quite easily give you the assembly code that's uh, getting generated by this. So I looked into that uh, here. You see the result. I hope you can read it a bit. Otherwise, I'll just give a quick recap of what's going on. Uh, one thing I thought first could be that the compiler somehow has just removed all these calls to new and delete. But, but they are actually here. So it is calling new and it is calling delete. Uh, and you can see here how much of the time is spent in these different uh, assembly lines. And you can see it's only 6% of the time. It's not that much. Actually, we have some moves here that takes a bit more. 
Uh, but the interesting part is down here at the non-allocating uh, part of the code. And here we have this uh, rep move SQ. Uh, and with my limited knowledge of assembly, I think it's repeated moves of sequential quad words, I believe. Uh, and if you investigate the code a little bit more, you can see that it actually copies from uh, the stack to somewhere else in the stack. And, and this number here is actually uh, like these two instructions together means that we are copying the entire struct from the stack to the stack. And obviously that takes quite a lot of time. And uh, I think you can maybe see uh, what the problem is here, that here we're copying the entire struct. In this one, we're just copying a few bytes. So in this one, we're actually copying the unique pointer itself but not what the unique pointer is pointing to. So it's these moves that does the whole, uh, the whole difference. So I thought, okay, that is, that is probably it. Uh, my, my life is good again. And I just know that this is only happens in GCC. In Clang, it doesn't happen. So that's another weird thing. Anyway, we can continue a bit. So let's fix up this benchmark. So instead of writing a do not optimize of my struct, we need to write do not optimize of what the unique pointer is pointing at. I don't know if you remember, but this I is the unique pointer. And now we are dereferencing it. So we're actually uh, saying that it should not optimize this uh, uh, memory that we have been pointing to. On the benchmark again and see what happens here. And huh, the world makes sense again. Now the allocating struct takes longer time than the non allocating struct. Not that much because malloc can be, or, or new, if you will, can be very quick um, quite often. If you're doing repeated allocations of the same size, it's probably just getting it in and out of the same uh, thing in, in, in cash pretty much anyway. So, so it, it's not a huge amount that is faster, but at least now it makes a little bit more sense. So there's, there is some sane results right here. Uh, but wait, there's more. So what I tried as well by trying to figure out what, what's going on here is was that I tried to run the original code in Compiler Explorer. So remember the original code where the allocating case was faster than the non-allocating case. So not the one that we fixed up. So it's the same code. It's the same compiler version. I think it was GCC 9.4. It was the same compilation flags as, as well. And the results by running this in Compiler Explorer was this. So the non-allocating was again much faster than the allocating. And, and comparing that to the original results I got in Quick Benchmark, it's not really the same. So here, yeah, the non-allocating was slower, but running the same code in a Compiler Explorer, the non-allocating was faster. So again, I was, I couldn't really see what the what the issue was here and how come these two were different. It was the same compiler, same compilation flags. So, so it should, for all intents and purposes, give the same results. So what's the difference? And the thing is, not everything is the same. Same compiler, pretty much everything was the same, but it uses different versions of the benchmark framework. So where in Compiler Explorer, I think I used the newest version uh, QuickBench actually use a slightly older version. And what I actually hit was one issue in the Google benchmark code, which explicitly does this. It copies, it does some unnecessary copies of the things you, you, you uh, call with this do not optimize. And this is fixed in Google benchmark uh, 1.6.2 and, and releases after that. Uh, and I can again reproduce uh, this if I use Compiler Explorer and used Google Benchmark 161 or something lower, it gives the same results as uh, QuickBench. So as you can see here, the allocating struct takes 41 nanoseconds and the non-allocating takes uh, 86. So all of a sudden things started to make sense again. But it took a little while to figure out why on earth that was, but at least my, my worldview is, is sane again. So that actually brings me to, to the end of this talk. Uh, and what can we learn from it? I don't really know. Benchmarking is hard, 
Uh, in particular, micro benchmarking can be quite misleading. Uh, and you should use your own compiler to do the benchmark and your own libraries and have everything in control and probably don't do not do these micro benchmarking because yeah, they can be quite leading. And don't do as I did for real benchmarks. Uh, it's not really representative of, of the real world. So yes, that is basically my conclusion to this. Benchmarking is hard. Thank you. Indeed, benchmarking is hard. And thanks, Nicola. Um, 